الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة على المصطفى وعلى آله وصحبته ومن اهتدى بهديه إلى يوم الدين أما بعد uh, Dear participants of Learn the Dean Daily uh, Welcome to the special episode uh, specially designed for the 10 best days of the year the days of Dhul Hijjah uh, The topic assigned to me is success or deeds which lead to success uh, we, live in, we live in an amazing time. Everyone wants success. So we get life coaches, we get career coaches, we get peer coaches, we go to universities and do MBAs and, um, you know, even when your parents send you to school, they send you to succeed. And they say, go study hard so you can become successful. Uh, go to university so you become successful. Uh, get a good job so you can become successful and everyone is chasing this success and no one seems to know what this success looks like um, To a lot of people success is money and yet you look at some of the rich people and Allah knows they need help They are very far from success. They are suffering uh, and we are no people to judge but um, you know people are going through serious difficulties so just judging a person by his bank balance is not sufficient a criteria for success. And to others it's fame. You know, how many likes do you have on Facebook? How many people follow you? And um, again, if you were to judge success by this notion of fame alone, um, you will see that a lot of the famous people and my Allah Rabbul Izza is in the burden of all are going through great difficulties uh, in dealing with this uh, with this fame so trying to find this elusive success we go back to what the creator said and there's no definition better than the one allah rabbul izza gave listen to it my dear brothers so that you want and understand and engrave it in your hearts and in your minds allah rabbul izza says listen listen فمن زحزح عن النار وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةَ فَقَدْ فَاز Whoever traverses over Jahannam, whoever is saved from Jahannam and enters Jannah, that person is indeed successful. So success, my dear ones, is to live a life that would lead you to Jannah. And no one understood this better than the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. No one understood it better than the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. You know, I try to explain through, through stories. So, um, when the Prophet ﷺ came to Medina, the inhabitants of the Medina, of, of this blessed city of Medina, um, are called the Ansar, the helpers, because they open their houses and their hearts and their doors for the immigrants that came from Mecca. And they, you know, they sacrificed everything. SubhanAllah, you look at the stories. Um, a Sahabi comes uh, from Mecca and the people of Mecca, the disbelievers of Mecca, took everything from him. They took his, uh, uh, you know, his animal, his mount, they took his money, they took his kids, they took his wife, they took his wife. And he, he walked through the 450 kilometer desert and in an acute heat alone. And he arrives in Medina al munawwara and the Rasul Salawatu Rabbi wa Salamuhu alayhi has just come out of the masjid and he sees this man who he knows from Mecca, you know, um, uh, uh, Quraysh, uh, a Qurayshi from his own tribe. And he looks at him and normally when you travel, you know, you, you bring luggage and you bring a camel and you bring some money. This man is just lone man and you can imagine his lips have cracked in the heat and his feet are blistered. And, and um, so the Rasul looks, Salawatu Rabbi wa Salamuhu alayhi, goes, what did you bring? So he says, nothing, O oh Prophet, I lost everything. So the Rasul said, no, you gained Jannah. So the Prophet ﷺ called an Ansari, uh, uh, in, you know, a citizen of Medina. He says, come, you are brothers with this Muhajir. And I want you to see how the Ansar opened their hearts and their homes and their lives to the, what hospitality they extended to these immigrants that came. So he tells him, he goes, come, my brother, look, I have two houses. See which one you like, I will vacate it for you, it is yours, take it. 
come, look, I have two businesses. Look at which one you like. I will hand the keys of that over to you. And to the extent, subhanAllah, mind boggling. Look, I have two wives. Look at which one you like. I will divorce her. Wait for her idda to finish, then marry her. They showed an example of hospitality not to be surpassed in history. These were the Ansar. Islam was indebted to them. The, the companions are indebted to them. And at the same, not only this, when it came time for campaigns and battles that had to be fought and, you know, in the defense of the deen, it was the Ansar, it was their men and their arms and, and you know, Subhan al-Khaliq. And the Prophet watched Salawatu Rabbi wa Salamuhu alayhi. And these Ansar, and their battles, their campaigns in Islamic history in which there's not a single Muhajir in it. The Ansar, he went by himself, finished the job and came back. So the Prophet ﷺ is longing for an opportunity, you know, that somehow I should repay the favor, somehow I should, you know, and the Prophet is wafi, he, um, subhan al-khaliq. So he's looking for an opportunity to repay the Ansar, but the Ansar never ask. They never say, you know, give me this or give me that. And eventually one day, these blessed individuals, the Ansar, the people of Medina, uh, they had a well which was, you know, outside the, the city and for the irrigation of their land and feeding of their livestock, they had to go out and get the water. It was, it was tedious. So a young man had a, had a dazzling idea, a legendary idea, and he comes and he tells the others, he goes, listen, there's an easy solution to this. We go to the Rasul, salawat rabbi wa salamu alayhi, and we say, ya Rasulullah, make dua that Allah Rabbul Izza opened for us water in the middle of the city. Like the same Lord that brought out Zamzam in the middle of Mecca, He will bring out water here in the middle of Medina. You just make dua. So they said, brilliant idea, all the problems will be solved, they'll, you know, they'll be ease. And so now they enter the masjid and they grew. And on their faces, you can see that they're going to request. They, 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 you know, there's, there's that light, this little twinkle of, of you know, request is going to come. And the Rasul, the Rasul knows people. So when he looks at them, he tells the people, he goes, Marhaban bil Ansar. Glad tidings to the Ansar. Welcome to the Ansar. Today, whatever they ask me, I will give. Today, there's nothing they will ask that I will not give. So they heard as they're walking the word of the Rasul, salawat rabbi wa salamu alayh, that whatever we ask today, he will give. And all of a sudden, the well became too small. Like, if everything else wasn't guaranteed, then khalas, we'll ask for this. But now anything in the heavens and earth is guaranteed. If the Warabbul Kaaba, if the Rasul were to ask for Uhud to turn to gold, Allah would have made Uhud into gold. So they realize that it's a blank check. Anything we ask, it will, it will be given. So they, so the young man says, O oh Prophet of Allah, give us a moment so we can discuss. So they discuss with one another. And he's, you know, what should we ask? The Prophet has given a blank check. Anything you want will be given. And what do you think they asked for? So they said, listen, forget about the well. Let's ask Allah. Let's ask the Prophet to ask Allah to forgive us. So they come to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, Ya Rasulullah, ask Allah to forgive us. So the Rasul raises his hand. Allahumma ghfir lil ansar. Oh Allah, forgive the ansar. Wali abna il Ansar and the sons of the Ansar and the children of the Ansar. Wali abna abna il Ansar and the children of the children of Ansar. And they shout out and look at the goodness of their hearts. Wa mawalina ya Rasulullah. Wa mawalina ya Rasulullah. And our servants, O Prophet of Allah, and our servants, O the Rasul said, and their servants, do you see? that they understood that the greatest success is the success of the Akhirah because they could have asked for anything. What would you have asked for? And they go, no, no. Akhirah is the real success. فَمَنْ زُحْزِحَ عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةَ فَقَدْ فَازِ The one who traverses over Jahannam 
and enters into Jannah. He has succeeded. And look at another, another Sahabi so that you don't think it's an you know, abstract incident. He used to watch the Rasul Salawatu Rabbi wa salamhu alayhi. And he used to see people gathered about him, around him during the day. They used to come and be at his beck and call and at his service. And at night, and it wasn't like our world, you know, there wasn't light. So once darkness came, it was dark. So and, and then when the night fell, everyone went to their homes and he realized that who will serve the Rasul if he asks for something, he needs something. So, you know, without making a fuss, he came and sat by the door of the Prophet all night. And he did this one day, two days, and then the Prophet ﷺ came out at night and he saw him sitting. So he asked him, what are you doing here at this hour? So the man explained, Ya Rasulullah, during the day you have everyone at your service. At night there is no one. I thought, what if the Prophet needs something? What if he wants to send something? I want someone on an errand. There should be someone. So I came and sat here in the event that you might need something. So this, this gesture, unspoken, he's just quietly sitting. He didn't come knock on the door, Ya Rasul, if you need me, I'm here. So he's just seated and look at the ikhlas and the hearts. So the Rasul, it touched the heart of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the Rasul says, Sal tu'ta, ask it will be granted. And, and their good fortune that they lived in a time where they laid eyes on the Rasul. So he says, and th their wisdom dazzles me. You know, we would have asked for a dozen things just straight one after the other. But he says, oh Prophet, I need, to, I need time. Let me think about this. So then he comes back. And what do you think he asked for? And look at the wisdom. So he says, Ya Rasul. I want murafaqatuka fil jannah. I want your friendship and companionship in jannah. This is what I ask. Can you imagine a normal awam, you know, being the companion of the Rasul in jannah? So the Prophet wasallam asks him, who taught you this? Like what a thing to ask for. So he says, Allah put it in my heart. So then the Rasul says, Allah, now you make ex increase in your sajdas and in your salah so that it can ease in the process of my dua. So I will make dua but to facilitate it, you increase your ta'a in your ibadah. But my point being that they realized that فَمَنْ زُحْزِحَ عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةَ فَقَدْ فَاسْ that, that, that jannah, that is success. And how to get there? My dear brothers and sisters, how do you secure Jannah? Allah Rabbul Izza says, whoever obeys Allah and obeys the Prophet, indeed, فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا وَمَنْ يُطْعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا Whoever obeys Allah and obeys the Prophet, indeed, he has earned the great success as in Jannah, meaning, live through this life living in obedience of Allah and in the obedience of the Rasul do what they said to do if they commanded you do it if they told you don't stay away from it and that is your Jannah in this world and your Jannah in the Akhirah you understand the Jannah of this world is the obedience of Allah and the obedience of the Prophet anytime you obey and do good Allah brings peace and tranquility into your heart and your mind. Uh, you have clarity of vision and purpose, peace and solace of heart, goodness of your surroundings. And this is Jannah. This is what everyone is seeking in this world. And in the Akhirah, it goes to the real Jannah and you get it. But then you ask Ustaz, but listen, give us some you know, tangible things to do. This is 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. So I, I found, I'm, you know, looked at another verse and Allah Rabbul Izzah says specifically, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ This is for those that want specific things to do. So Allah Rabbul Izzah says, and I'll go through it quickly because my time with here has been very limited. So Allah Rabbul Izzah says, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Indeed, successful are the believers. So the first thing, my dear ones, 
correct and fix the iman, the belief in your hearts. Make sure that your belief is correct. Make sure it is the belief that Allah and His Prophet wanted and make sure it is at the level that is desirable to Allah and His Prophet. So, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Second, الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ Those who in their salah, they have khushu'. Khushu' is the fear of Allah Rabbul Izza coupled with his ta'zeem and ijlal, meaning stand in salah with your heart filled in awe and reverence of the master. You know, I stand in front of the king of kings and the master of masters, the one who made the sun and the moon and the one whom when I say Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, he Jalla Subhanahu responds and says, Hamadani Abdi, and you say Ar Rahman Ar Rahim, and he Jalla Subhanahu says, Athna Aliya Abdi, fill your heart with that khushu and the awe and reverence of the Master. So Iman, khushu, and then Allah Rabbul Izza says, Walladinahum Anil Laghwi Mu'ridun, those who avoid silliness. You know, time wasting this game and that game and this social media and that social media and where it is for khair, walillahi alhamd, you know, you're using it for da'wah, Allah bless it and increase it for you. But where it is just unnecessary time wasting, Allah Rabbul Izzah says, avoid time wasting. And then Allah Rabbul Izzah says, Jalla Subhana, walladhina hum lizzakati fa'iloon. And uh, you know, I, I, I look at the wording, Allah Rabbul Izzah doesn't say, and those who give zakah. He says, and those who work for zakah. It seems as though it is people, or they are people, who work to become, or to have enough for their own needs, but then also have enough to give extra to people. So they work to be able to give zakah. Or another translation, they work for zakah, as in they promote, you know, they remind people to give zakah, they give zakah, they role model it to people. So, um, my dear brothers, first of all, give zakah and ensure that the people around you are reminded about zakah. And ideally, become my Allah Rabbul Izzah, honor you with it. Become self-sufficient. Become people that have enough for their own selves. And then become people who are able to help others, my Allah Rabbul Izzah, uh, make it a cause of good for you. And then just quickly, Allah Rabbul Izzah says, وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِفُرُوجِهِمْ حَافِظُونَ And those who safeguard their chastity, إِلَّا عَلَىٰ أَزْوَاجِهِمْ أَوْ مَا مَلَكَتْ أَيْمَانُهُمْ فَإِنَّهُمْ غَيْرُ مَلُومِينَ Except for their wives and those, um, you know, uh, others who they have rights over, as in, you know, they, they're allowed to exercise their desires with. Uh, and in that case, there's no blame on them. And وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِأَمَانَاتِهِمْ وَعَهْدِهِمْ رَاعُونَ Muslims, never break your, your promise, never break your trust. Someone gives you $50, say here, or 50 riyal, or 50 rupees, or whatever, says, listen, my brother, I am going away, look after this for me. Don't even spend that 50 and replace it with another. Keep that same $50 as the epitome of, of, of trust. So he gave me this one, I won't even spend this. And then reflect the same in the rest of life. So don't break your promise. Um, you know, where there's, where there's reason, it is different, but ordinarily. And don't betray your trust. And those who safeguard their prayers, um, dear ones, organize your day around your salah, not your salawat around your day. Do you understand? Organize your day around the prayers. Don't organize the prayers around your day. You know, so uh, for example, Fajr comes very early in, on, in summer. So you go, but work starts at 8 o'clock. Khalas, it's all right. I'll sleep in. I'll wake up at 6. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll pray the salah later. No, 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 my brother. Uh, wake up early. Pray your salah. Uh, do what is the wajib and what is, you know, you're responsible to do. Organize your day around that. May Allah Rabbul Izzah bless you. And then Allah Rabbul Izzah says, أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْوَارِثُونَ These people who believe and do these righteous deeds, they are the ones who will inherit. What will they inherit? الَّذِينَ يَرِثُونَ الْفِرْدَوْسَ 
هم فيها خالدون they will inherit جنات الفردوس and they, they will live in eternity my Allah gather me and you in جنات الفردوس my dear brothers and sisters my Allah bless you and guide you and guard you and protect you and reward you and increase the likes of you uh, my Allah رب العزة accept your طاعة in your ibadah and keep this brother of yours in your dua for Allah knows we are in need فقلت ما قلت إن تكو حسنة فمن الله وإن تكو سيئة فمن نفسي وشيطان أدعو الله وأنتم موقنون بالإجابة والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته